Hi, this is Ken from Tuning Fork Music uh, with a special presentation of uh, ABRSM TheoryWorks. It's an app that's available on the uh, app stores, whether you're doing the Google App Store or the iTunes App Store, and it's designed to help people with their theory. And uh, as you can see on the screen, <coughs> I already have it up. Uh, the app is fairly inexpensive. Uh, last I checked, it was about five US dollars, and uh, I don't know, 20 or so ringgit. And um, it's a good tool to get your theory knowledge up. As you can see, we have uh, five grades here, uh, which corresponds to ABRSM's uh, five grades. And uh, there are six steps, I guess, within each grade here. So I'll, uh, I'm, this is basically the first of a video series that's going to be uh, going through a walkthrough. And along the way, I'll try to help explain the, uh, the theory that goes along with it. All right, so we might as well start off with grade one. <clears throat> okay, and within grade, the grades, they have like topics here. So uh, let's just look at basics. So most of these that you see with basics, it's just kind of like the information of what it's going to cover. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it because I just want to see the engineering of it. So here it talks about what is a crotchet, what is a quaver, that you have two quavers to a crotchet. Um, they have the semi-quavers, the four semi-quavers to a crotchet. Um, in American uh, parlance, we'd actually be talking about quarters, eighths, and sixteenths. Okay. The division of time is very critical to understanding rhythm, and rhythm is the core of music. Otherwise, it's just random noise. Um, then they explain a little bit about the staffs, uh, where all the letters are, the numbers are. I'm sorry, not no numbers, just letters. All right. <clears throat> And uh, just explaining the origins of the bass clef, and also talking about uh, crotchet or quarters, quavers or eighths, or semi-quavers, or sixteenths, rests. Okay, and so once you're done with that, let's see. Let's start off with time values, since there was so much on right up here. Okay, and so it just basically goes through uh, which of these is a crotchet, right? Um, for an American like myself, it takes a little bit of time to translate when I first came here to uh, Malaysia. So again, I've been used to quarters and eighths and whatnot, but obviously it's the first choice here, all right? and then each time you can go ahead and check, and it just corrects to you on that. Um, there's no time limit, so it's a very relaxed and easy uh, exercise to go through. All right, then we go over quavers, where Americans like to go eighth notes, that's the fourth one, let's check. All right, so far so good. And now, they also have true and false questions, which require a little bit of thinking. It's very quick to just jump in and say, this is that, but it kind of in induces some critical thinking. It's like, is this first instinct true? Um, so, it's saying, is this, this is a semi-quaver, true or false. All right, we see the two flags, you know, which, uh, so uh, for those that are absolute beginners, when you have a crotchet, which is just one beat, one beat, um, it's just a plain uh, no flag, right? Just the line. <clears throat> First line indicates dividing in half. That means the, qua the quavers or the apes. Two and one beat. And then the semi quavers, right? There's two uh, flags or two dashes if you want to, if you group a whole bunch of them together. And uh, we see that has two uh, flags here. So we're going to say true. And let's check ourselves. All right, very, very good. Now, see, this is where it gets a little, uh, you gotta be careful. It says, this is a crotchet. Is it? We see one flag, so therefore, it is not a crotchet. It is a quaver. So we're gonna say false. All right, so far, so good. All right, now, <clears throat> some of these uh, questions involve dragging the correct answer into the box. All right, so just get some more tactile feedback. Um, these, as the questions get more and more complicated, these sort of question and answer sessions uh, techniques is quite helpful. So, this is a what, okay? We see it's a note, we see it's got one flag, so therefore it's a quaver. So we drag it into the middle, we check ourselves, and we are correct. Okay, this is a quaver, true or false, one flag, true. Alright, so far so good. Okay, then you have to choose which of these is a semi-quaver. We remember semi-quavers has two flags. All right, so two little tails, two flags on the bottom or the top, depending on where the uh, note is uh, 
pointing. We're going to pick the second one and check, and we are correct. All right. <clears throat> now, sometimes they put in something silly like the, uh, the girl in there just to kind of make it easier. So you don't have just four things to choose from. Really, realistically, you only have three. But which of these notes has the shortest duration? Okay, notes, not the little girl here. All right. So the more flags that you see, generally the more it's divided up. So therefore, it is the shortest duration, all right? the tiniest slices of time. So we're going to check this one on the bottom right. We're going to make sure we're correct. And there we go. We've picked our semiquaver. All right, next, drag the correct answer into the box. Okay, so this is a, we see two flags, semi-quaver, or if you're an American, it's a 16th note. All right, so far, so good. Okay, now drag the correct answer into the box. This is, okay, it's a note, no flags, just a straight line, so therefore it is a crotchet. Okay. All right, once you're done, you have that nice little round there. And then you can choose another topic here. All right. <clears throat> so let's pick a, uh, let's go pick on pitch here. Okay, so then this goes with the, uh, the letter names and whatnot. Um, frequently, uh, for bass clef, you are generally going to think of these mnemonics that you, that you have here. You have um, on, from the spaces from the bottom, A, C, E, G. Uh, I was taught as a young kid who was all cows eat grass. I assume that's true. I don't know. Maybe there's some cows that like to eat chicken. I don't know. Carnivorous cows. We, we don't know. But A-C-E-G, all cow eat grass, is a good way to remember that. Um, for the lines, right, the lowest line is a G, then B, then D, then F, and A. Um, and this is perhaps a little bit more outdated, but a uh, good boy does fine already. We don't know if he's a naughty boy, we don't care, it's just G-B-D-F-A. Good boy does fine already. Um, I'm not even sure if that's really good English. Anyway, we see that it is on the first line. All cows eat grass, we see A. All right, so we're going to pick an A there and we have to drag it. And check, and we're correct. All right. So, <clears throat> this is a nice uh, thing, and it actually mirrors a lot of what happens in the uh, theory exam papers where you're going to be matching things and drawing lines and what have you. So here we just have to put it in order. So top one. Uh, so just for beginners, the lines on the staff on the treble clef, right, the upper range. Okay, so uh, easiest way to remember the spaces is this, our face, F-A-C-E. No real mnemonic, it's just the word face. Um, then for the lines, the lowest line is an E, then we have a G, and then we have a B, a D, and an F. So um, every if you keep with the good boy thing, you have every good boy does fine. Um, okay, who knows how good that boy is? Uh, maybe I'm a good boy. Maybe not. Anyway, third line on the treble clef would be a B. All right. Uh, third line from the bottom uh, on the bass clef would be a D, because a good boy does, fine already, all right, then we're good, lowest line is a G on the treble clef, and then that by process of elimination, or if you happen to remember face, that's an F, we check ourselves, and we're good, all right, drag the great known in there, third space, all cow eats grass, all right, so we put an E, all right, and to match the corresponding there, I'm just going to quickly go through this, that's an A, that's a C, that's an E, and that would be a G. Right. And then you can just refer to any chart. Yeah. I recommend generally for uh, people that are just beginning uh, to read music and notes. Uh, Alfred makes like a wonderful chart um, uh, reader, and it's just kind of like this sliding, uh, uh, how do you put it there? It's just basically a sliding note. Right, and it's just cut in, in the middle. So you're able to slide the note to different you know, positions on the staff. And there's a ruler and there's a guide. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I can find like a picture and just kind of tack it on into this video here. But I found that too very handy for my students that are just beginning to read music. All right, and then we continue on. This would be a C. This is a B. Now, interesting enough, this is like level one already, but we're actually above the staff. Okay, so you're meant to not just memorize the position of the stats, but understand that you can just, 
every, every movement up and down on the staff is a little bit of an increment. Once you start running out of lines, right, you know, you're going to go uh, above the first line, right? In this case, above the first line on the base clef is after A is B. And then you start tacking on lines on top of that. Those are called ledger lines, um, and I'm not sure if they're in this, like, early stages, but you'll see them in later uh, videos, I'm sure. All right, that's E, the end of face, and then that's G, the beginning of Good Boy Does Fine Already. Check, and we're okay. All right, that's an F. All right, we check. All right, that's a C. Sorry if I'm going too fast, but this is generally, again, I'm just showing the guides and seeing how it works. All right, and that's a C, that's a B, that's a G, and that's an A. All right. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see it and read up, uh, read up along on it. All right, all cow eat grass. It's on the top, so we put a G. Let's see, that an A. All right. Uh, okay, then which of these notes is a D? Now this can be very, very tricky and confusing for the early uh, people that are just starting out, because you have to have the idea of the clef being the reference a lot. In the initial part of the video, where I was scrolling rather quickly past the uh, the theory explanation in the beginning, uh, there's a more clear definition. If you get the app, you'll be able to read it with no problem. Right? <clears throat> but let's go through the choices here. Okay, so um, we see there it's on the third line of the bass clef. We remember that the bass clef starts with G on the bottom. Good boy, does fine already. Does that's it. the first thing is a D. So if we look at the second one, that's actually, good boy does fine already, that's an F. Alright, then you have the spaces on the bass clef, all cow eat grass, that's a C. And then we have a completely different uh, clef here. Alright, and that yes, it's in the middle of the staff, but because it's a trill clef, and we go every good boy does fine, that's actually a B. So we're going to the, f the first uh, uh, choice. All right, then we'll quickly go through these. All right, this is an E because on the base clef, all cow eats grass. And, and then we have an F here, which is, ah, okay. So this will get some people, if they don't think about how it is in battle and they just memorize what's on the staff here. Okay, we know that the first one is a G from the, uh, and we know that the third one is an A based on all those mnemonics. Um, for that treble clef on the all the way extreme right side that you're seeing right now, okay, the lowest line is E. If you go one down below, just sinking down, it's the previous letter, that's D. All right? And now the same thing happens in the second and correct answer. It's a G, but one down there from the bottom, all right, the previous letter, that's an F. So we select the second one and we go. Okay, uh, we'll quickly blaze through this. Last one's an F. And uh, which one is these? The G. It's a treble clef one in here. Right. Third one. Which one is these? Is an A. So you can tell this is. It can get quite tedious. Uh, but tedium is the way to drill people, unfortunately. So you just got to keep rolling through these, and I'm just rolling through these very fast now because. Now keep in mind that what I'm showing you now will not necessarily appear in your app. But it's a whole pool of questions. And the whole pool of questions, it's got a lot of variety. Okay, so again, you can't just memorize just those answers and whatnot. It actually has such a large question and answer pool that it tells you pretty well. Ah, okay, now this is not fun for, for some folks here. Which note is the highest? Okay, and then you have to think about, you know, the pitches. You have to think about your clefts. Uh, the general rule is the lower it is on the staff, okay, meaning you know you've, you've got the few lines, right? The lower it is on the staff, that is generally a lower pitch. Likewise, the higher up it is, the higher. It's very visual, um, but you have to watch out for clefts and uh, uh, maybe various other things, octave science, what have you. All right? But we can see that the one on the right is higher. It's on the same clef, and there happen to be both C's. But I'm going to pick the right C. All right, now, which one's the highest? Okay, the one on the right, because it's higher and the same clef. All right, we're still on the same clef, the one on the right, because, you know, it's going up. Yeah. Oh, what, what did I do here? Ah, 
See, I made my error here. I was so quickly going into it, going, hey, okay, which one's the highest, which one's the highest? You have to check the question. And this is also how it is. So I am incorrect because, no, it's not asking which one is the highest, it's asking which one's the lowest. Therefore, the one on the bottom. Just to do it, we try again just to make sure. All right, the one on the left because it's lowest. My fault. <laughs> okay, um, and this is where you've got, and again, we should be more careful like I am, I go too fast, of looking from lower to highest or highest to lowest. That's what the question might be asking. All right, so um, this one is an F. All right, and this is a B. And this is an E. This is a G. Now, if you get mixed up and all that, you can switch around whatever uh, positions you want. But we don't want to because we had it correct. And there we go. All right. All right. We see that we check the question. It's lowest to highest. All right. And they're all treble clips, so it's not too bad. G, A, D, G. All right. It's all in the same clef. Ah, check the question. Highest to lowest. Okay. Do, ti, fa, mi. Um, by the way, I'm developing a uh, chromatic fix do uh, uh, book, so uh, we'll be probably wanting to speak more in solfege. All right. Once again, from highest to lowest. Okay. So, upper sol, fa, lower sol, lower fa. All right. All right. Match notes. Okay. Check your clef. Check. Um, Check you know line or space whatever works for you. This is la. This is t. This is me, and this is re. Okay, and we keep going. La, re, t, fa. Okay. Okay. And that round's complete. All right. I have I'm a little less than perfect because. Well, I goofed on that one by not reading the question properly. All right, and let's do one last one here. Okay, now we're talking about rests. Now, uh, rests, uh, again, they kind of don't have, the, they're a little bit more difficult for some, you know, they're very visually derived because uh, depending on how you write the crotchet rest, um, you, uh, in France, you may find it, you know, a backwards quaver and whatnot. I don't think they use that system quite so much anymore. And then, of course, you see the symbol that you see on the second one here. Um, uh, anyway, it follows the same general principle. If you can memorize that little squiggle there as the crotchet or one beat rest, all right, the little thing that looks like a seven, all right, if it has one flag on that uh, seven figure, that's a quaver rest or eighth rest, and if it's got two flags, it's a semi-quaver or a sixteenth rest. Okay, it's asking for a crotchet rest, which is the funny looking syllable on there, and we go correct. All right, quavers, one flag, second. All right, semi-quaver rest, two flags, there we go. All right, now drag the correct rest name, again it's getting more tactile. Okay, we see it's just a plain squiggle, no flags, no anything. It's therefore a crotchet rest, and we put checked. All right, and then one flag, that would make it a quaver rest. All right, and then correct rest name, okay, two flags, semi-quaver rest. All right, all right, now, again, shortest duration versus the longest duration. Okay, the more flags, all right, the tinier the slices, the tinier the slices, the shorter the duration. All right, so uh, here we go. That would be the semi quaver rest. Okay. All right, this is a crotchet rest, true or false. Okay, we don't we see a flag, we don't see that nice big, almost like a Z syllable. Um, this has to be false. So we're gonna click there and check ourselves. We're correct. All right, this is a quaver rest. Quaver rests have one flag. I don't see any flags, therefore, we should answer false to this question. This is a semi quaver rest. This is a lot of false. This thing is lying to us. But in any case, it's false because semi quavers have two flags, not one. Okay, that completes level one. All right, so. 
Um, overall, you can see your progress as it you know goes through. So this is a good place to stop. Um, I'll be basically doing one of each grade as we go along. Uh, hopefully, you see some interesting things, might, may even learn a thing or two. Um, and you get to at least see this ABRSM uh, Theory Works app in action. All right, once again, uh, Ken from Tunic Fork, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.